Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Dale Deegan of HP Storage. And there's a number of customers here that are talking about how they're using uh, Store Virtual VSA in uh, real world implementations. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Sure, so I, work, I run the uh, business for software defined storage at HP Storage. And uh, what we're doing is really uh, having a very open way of looking at the market and giving people lots and lots of choice on how they can take advantage of the cost efficiencies and the flexibility of software defined storage. And so at this event in Discover, we had a few customers here talking about their different use cases. Uh, these are happening today. They're real life uh, in production people sharing their experiences with other customers here, uh, being able to take advantage of, like I said, real cost and flexibility and how it plays very nicely with the rest of the storage array portfolio. So first off, uh, one of them that spoke with me was uh, FedEx. Uh, they've actually been speak, they've had three years running where they speak to customers about how they've been utilizing software defined storage in their data center. And uh, initially they had used it in remote offices, uh, actually set up as a, a small virtualized environment and uh, scale out as needed. And what they liked about it was the remote uh, management of it from their data center. It really works nice for a lot of uh, enterprise customers. Uh, we've got a lot of SMB customers that have similar needs as those remote offices out there where they're looking for a very uh, nice price point and entry point for virtualization and a very simple solution. Where you, With our store virtual VSA solution you can actually uh, make, create scaled store, share out storage on the same servers that you have your virtual machines on. So effectively you can remove the need for a shared storage array. Uh, there were two other customers here. One was a very large service provider from Japan named Rakuten, and they spoke about how they have built their infrastructure on 3PAR and also store virtual VSA. Their use case was really interesting because it really takes advantage of that flexibility of what you can have in the underlying hardware of a product. So what they did is they actually have uh, built a, a uh, pure solid state cluster out of a, a 2U box with four servers in it and associated virtual machine VSA storage with all solid state in it. Very, very uh, robust, very high speed, high performance tier that they use within their service provider data center. Uh, thirdly, we had a, a keynote speaker that worked with uh, David Scott from Opus Interactive. So Opus Interactive is a service provider in the Northwest and they're 100% uh, based on software defined storage. They have a blade system architecture and they utilize the uh, virtual storage appliance from HP to actually be all of their shared storage and uh, they've recently expanded and opened up multiple data centers with this and a really solid example of someone being a hundred percent dedicated and utilizing the uh, real flexibility. The VSA, what you can do is you can assign uh, any type of virtualized storage or compute to it so you could have different tiers of storage with the same VSA license. You could have SATA based for your archival type solution as Rakuten had. You could have uh, highest tier in solid state or you can take advantage of the adaptive optimization built into the solution and have really high performance and high capacity. Rounding it all out, uh, in our portfolio we also have backup recovery and archive in our store once VSA. And uh, we're, having, we're seeing a lot of that out in the enterprise right now. People are taking it and uh, utilizing it in their remote offices for their deduplicated replication for their backup and recovery. Additionally, we're seeing uh, cloud service providers very interested in having it uh, as a uh, basically replication into the cloud, utilizing the VSA in that area. So HP, if I think about what we're doing with software defined storage, we like to differentiate ourselves by being very, very open with our solution. We're not going to lock you into a proprietary management orchestration type area. What we've done is we're architecting all of our software defined storage to be analogous and uh, to our storage array portfolio. So you have the full spectrum. You've got your service refined storage in the appliances that are the highest level uh, service level agreements. It's the best combination of hardware and software. And then we go all the way down the spectrum <clears throat> excuse me, to software defined storage, which is software only. <clears throat> what we can do with software only is we can put on any underlying hardware from any brand. We, on purpose, go and have multiple hypervisor support. Uh, for VMware, Hyper-V, we're looking at growing into the KVM area. And then, additionally on top of that, for the orchestration, the management of all of this, 
we use whatever the customer wants to use. You can provision all of our products from vCenter, from Microsoft System Center. We're working with a deep integration into OpenStack distributions. And so really a customer has choice and options to use what they're managing and, and what hardware they have today. And it's really investment protection because they can use our software to find storage solution, our proven products in next generations, no matter what hardware or hypervisor vendor they choose to work with. Now if I could rewind just a little bit, so that Opus, which is the, the third customer example that you gave, and you said that they are entirely uh, building their, their storage infrastructure on, on uh, VSA. I, I think that's a really interesting uh, thing to touch on because, I mean, I think that a lot of the early use cases that I was hearing about VSA, it was more like the, the FedEx remote office scenario where you're using it in um, a, like kind of a smaller, uh, a smaller yeah. scale, and so, uh, can you speak a little bit to that that kind of broad, yeah. how you can go from small to, to really big? Yeah, it's really amazing. It's a real watershed moment right now. The technologies of the underlying hardware have just leaped forward to where 10, 10 years ago, one virtual machine and would basically consume all the compute power of your server. You had a single CPU socket on there. Now, you have multiple CPUs, you have really uh, affordable solid state, and it allows a um, real life customer like Opus Interactive to build various tiers of storage and provision it out and actually uh, provide that as a service provider to other solutions, and they're growing very, very rapidly. Uh, they're really the cost and flexibility are allowing them to do this. And so, as you see that, as you said, you can go from um, different tiers of storage, you can have different capacities. We offer it in the uh, 10 terabyte initially, but then we came with a lower cost bundle of three, four terabyte solutions, but also we've got 50 terabyte nodes. It's a scale out solution. And so those 50 terabytes can be clustered together up to uh, 32 per management group. And you can have multiple management groups. So our service provider solutions are looking at very large scale out capabilities such as that. That's pretty impressive because I mean, normally you would think about somebody having to buy um, kind of more appliance-based storage solutions to accomplish the same thing. Yeah, exactly. I'm really um, excited to be where we're at because I see uh, it's just market forces going to drive this. The, uh, the, the inertia behind the underlying technologies is just going to get faster and faster. The economics and flexibility of what you can do with software allow us to really dynamically change what you have in your environment on a, on a regular basis. FedEx showed a nice example where they had two racks of servers. They initially built them into two clusters and they just re-architected and they decided to break it into four clusters, giving them four separate availability zones. And they were, they were shocked because they didn't have to order any new controllers. They didn't have to wait and provision storage. They just were able to do it instantly. And it gave them that flexibility and agility to really uh, take advantage of what they needed for that moment in time. So really inside somebody's own, own data center or own configuration, it, it's kind of like having storage as a service internally. It really is. That's where our customers are going today. And we're working with partners and vendors to where we're going to see this actually expand out to where you have hybrid environments. Uh, you have your own data center cloud. You have uh, maybe public cloud and access to the same virtual storage appliances and those data services. And it spans the whole spectrum across that. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing where Store Virtual is going. Thanks, Dale. All right. Thank you.